Today I'm out in a nondescript business park in Milpitas because I have my hands on a Lectron Vortex NACS to CCS DC fast charge adapter. And of course, we have our Blazer EV long term. So we're going to see exactly how quick this vehicle can charge with an NACS adapter. Now, interestingly, you can get yourself a Lectron adapter on their website, on Amazon, etc. Or Theoretically, it looks like you can actually get them through General Motors as well because GM has started shipping out NACS to CCS adapters for their vehicles. You have to pay for them, mind you. They're not free like we saw from Ford and from Rivian. You have to pay for them. But GM is going in a slightly different direction than Ford was. So on the Ford side of things, when you buy the adapter or one is included for free, it's a Tesla NACS to CACS adapter. It's a little bit shorter than this. It's about two inches shorter. I don't think it's built quite as well as the Electron adapter. Uh, we'll go into that in greater detail in a different video. But on the GM side of things, you're always going to have to pay for the adapter. And which adapter you get seems to depend on which EV you have. So if you have, for instance, a Chevy Bolt, it looks like you're actually going to be getting a Electron adapter. This is the Electron Vortex. And if you have a Blazer EV and you order an adapter, it looks like you're going to get the Tesla adapter. They function exactly the same because there's really no smarts going on inside this adapter. It's just adapting the pins from one side to the other. And then it has some thermal switches inside to make sure that if a thermal event does happen and things overheat, that it will cut the power off. And that's why I'm really intrigued to see what happens with this Blazer EV. As I've said in previous videos, the Blazer in the 85 kilowatt hour battery pack, which also applies to the Optic, uh, the Equinox EV, and a number of other EVs out there on the Ultium platform, this battery has a very low voltage. It can actually be as low as around 300 volts when the battery is discharged, and that means that you have to use a high current CCS station to charge this vehicle at 150 kilowatts. Of course, NACS stations, the Tesla supercharger network, they're all high current stations. If you go to an NACS station, a Tesla supercharger station that's rated for 250 kilowatts or higher, that should be able to charge this battery at its maximum rate. So let's find out and let's see how the charge curve looks when using an adapter like this, because at 500 amps sustained for quite some time, I wonder if there's going to be any overheating issue. Now, I should say at the moment, it's about 60 degrees outside. It's an overcast day. So heat load, thermal load from the outside is not going to be a big, big problem. Cooling is definitely going to be the problem that I could foresee. Let's see how this goes. Let's talk about vehicle status first. We're at 11% state of charge there. And if I look at our data log, because we do data log everything here when we DC fast charge, we're at 3.4 volts per cell, which means the pack is actually just barely over 270 volts. So actually solidly under 300 volts at the moment. Uh, we're consuming a little bit of power because of course we have the heater on. And if we go in here, and uh, we take a look, for instance, at the uh, DC fast charge setting. So fast charge prep here, we're ready to plug in at any time. Now let's talk about DC fast charge routing. A lot of folks have been asking about this. The software now includes the option to select an NACS adapter. So you can say you have one of those on board. Then you can filter stations by speed. So we're gonna need to select 150 kilowatts because most supercharger stations will top out at 250 kilowatts, not 350. So if we select 350, you actually won't get very many supercharger stations on the list. In fact, even though I am right next to a V4 station, uh, I'm actually not sure whether this V4 station has the newer cabinets to support the faster charge rate, uh, but according to the car, it does not. So if I select 150 kilowatts, then you can see it's going to be included in the list. But oddly, even though I am literally in the parking lot for the supercharger station, it actually is going to recommend this Electrify America station as option number one. Uh, but again, we're just going to go ahead and choose the supercharger station. And then let's see how this works for a longer distance journey. Hey, Google, take me to Los Angeles. Los Angeles. All right. So there we go, the chargers will be needed. So three charging stops, let's go ahead and see what that is. So yep, it wants to take me to the EA stations there, even though we now have the NAX adapter selected and even though literally I am in a supercharger parking lot. Let's see if that's based in reality because who knows, maybe those EA stations would actually charge this a little bit quicker. To start charging, you can either use the Tesla app or you can use the Chevy app. Right now I'm in the My Chevy app and this does show station status. So you can see it has 18 out of 20 ports available at this location. I just hit charge here, then it's going to ask which pedestal 
I am parked in front of. So you do have quite a long list right there. Let's go ahead and find the one that we're in front of and start the process. Right now we're in front of pedestal 5D and I should mention that this station is a magic dock station. So if we look at the app, it'll actually show you that this is a magic dock station, but we don't want a magic dock. We want to try out the adapters. Let's see how that goes. Since this is one of the newer Tesla V4 stations, we also have a little LCD here that does show you the rate to charge. Sorry about the flickering there on the screen. That's just uh, one of the things to deal with with cameras. So we do have that there. And of course you can actually see charge status on that screen as well. Another thing to note is that since we're at a V4 station, the cable is a little bit longer, so you don't have to worry quite so much, and you can stay in the actual parking stall you're assigned. Tesla does say that if you're charging at a V3 station, it's okay to occupy two charging spaces, although that could obviously cause some problems with other chargers around you. So let's just go ahead and go into the Tesla app. Since this is station 5D, we'll go ahead and select that and start charging. Then we'll go ahead and see how this works. The adapter is definitely plugged in. We'll see how this functions here. All right, we've plugged in. The Chevy app is connecting to the charger. Let's just see how this goes. Uh, it does warn that it can take a little bit of time. I did notice that charging a Ford Lightning yesterday with the adapter was definitely faster than charging this Chevy Blazer. I don't know exactly why that is. And as you can see on our time-lapse footage, we're getting 147 kilowatts into the battery. This is definitely significantly better than a 150 uh, kilowatt EA station. As you can see by our OBD2 data logging, we're basically getting 500 amps through that connector, 494 amps into the pack itself. Cell voltage has gone up there. Not a lot of cooling is required, so no worries about cooling there for the car. And we are actually currently achieving 151 kilowatts. If this thing hangs on, this could be one of our fastest charge cycles in the Blazer EV. We're going to let the battery get all the way up to 80% so we can see how that goes and uh, I'll see you on the other side. For a baseline, let's go ahead and check out the temperature of the connector right now. It's about 19.6 degrees Celsius. The Tesla handle basically the same 19 degrees Celsius. Actually it's going down a little bit 18 degrees Celsius. Remember that this does have a liquid cooled cable. So the cable there is 18.6. The outside of the car 19.3 so actually a uh, pretty consistent all the way around there for temperatures and again this is the electron adapter there not the magic dock adapter so let's go ahead and see how that goes well that really has not taken very long we're up here at 28 percent state of charge and we're still cooking along at over 150 kilowatts sorry my uh, time lapse cameras in the way that's hard to show you uh, but if we take a look down here you'll notice that the battery is accepting about 480 amps. So we're already starting to fall a little bit off of that 500 amp maximum charge curve here. And that's pretty logical because the battery state of charge is going up. So the voltage is going up. So in order to maintain that 150 kilowatt charge rate, uh, the current starts going down as the voltage rises. We're well over halfway through the charging cycle at 53% right there. We're still sucking down about 300 amps into the battery. So let's take a look and see what the temperature of the connector is the charge cycle has started to taper off. So we just dropped below 100 kilowatts. Charge connector is actually relatively cool. As you can see there, it's just about 23 to 24 degrees Celsius. It's a little bit warmer, closer to the pins along the body. Still about 22 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Celsius out here for the Tesla handle. Again, this portion is liquid cooled. The actual cable down there, 19 degrees Celsius, and just for shits and giggles, uh, the body of the car, it's actually 23.8 degrees Celsius. So the heat right here, it's actually the same as the handle right there. That's one thing I noticed about the Electron adapter versus the Ford Tesla adapter or the Magic Dock adapter is that this actually seems to reject heat a little bit better than those other adapters. But keep in mind, it's not liquid cooled. As we enter this brave new world where adapters are going to be everywhere, I have to admit I was a bit surprised that it had zero impact at all on the charging speeds on the Chevy Blazer. Well, that's actually not correct. It actually improved them. You see, Tesla stations seem better able to output higher current for longer periods of time versus some of the CCS stations out there. So in our charging experience so far with our Blazer EV, there have been times where you roll up to a station, the charge rate actually pops up quite nicely and then starts dropping down. 
Also keep in mind that in order to get the 155 kilowatt charge rate on your Chevy Blazer with the small battery pack, this is a low voltage problem on the Chevy side, you have to use a 350 kilowatt CCS station. If you roll up to a 150 kilowatt station, those can't put out 500 amps. They're limited usually to around 350 amps, so it charges significantly slower. However, pretty much all of the Tesla stations that you will have access to as a Chevy owner with the adapter will charge the vehicle at its fastest pace. So not only is it really quick, it is indeed a bit more reliable. And that's why I'm not too bummed that you're going to have to have an adapter around to do that. Now, which adapter is right for you? We were using the Lectron adapter in this video. I do like its build quality. I also like the fact that it's a little bit lighter than this A to Z adapter. The A to Z adapter does have an extra feature we don't find in the Lectron one, which is a single button to unlatch both sides of the adapter. That's kind of cool. But again, there's not a lot going on inside the adapter. Over here, we actually have one of the GM adapters. Of course, this is really the Tesla adapter. As you can see, it is physically a little bit smaller. It's not a big deal. I also think that uh, if I were to choose, since GM is not going to be giving you one for free, I would probably run out and get an aftermarket adapter. Last caveat I should talk about is that GM does say, big disclaimer, that if you are using a Tesla supercharger station, here's the big disclaimer, and they claim that an aftermarket adapter damages your vehicle is somehow responsible for that, then they won't honor things in warranty. It doesn't cancel the warranty. They can't really do that. But it does mean that if, you know, something weird goes wrong and you have a fried charge port on your car and you admit to your dealer that you were using a Lectron adapter, then they're going to go, oh, it's the Lectron adapter that was the problem and arguments might ensue. You know, exactly how big of a problem that is, we don't know. Stay tuned for that because I'm sure there will be news reports long term if anything does actually go down. In the meantime, though, I wouldn't have a problem using one of these on my own Chevy Blazer. And indeed, I picked up one of these for uh, my Volvo C40 because Volvo is now in the party. So now Volvo, Polestar, Rivian, General Motors, Ford, etc., and an increasing number of manufacturers coming soon. Hyundai is actually going to have the NACS inlet on new vehicles soon. Uh, Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis will all have access to the supercharger network in short order as well. So... Lots of adapters are going to be needed. And currently, apparently, the uh, Lectron adapter is the best-selling of them all. See all of you later.